Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge YouTube channel and to another mega preview, this time for the Volta Ciclista a Catalunya 2021, a seven day world tour level stage race starting this Monday, less than 48 hours, featuring a very strong climbing field as well as some breakaway specialists. I'll have highlights of every single stage on the channel through the license I purchased from ASO. The race website's linked down below where you can find various information, including the official broadcasters by geography. And of course, if you like these previews, which take the longest to prepare of any of my videos, but they're the most fun, then like it down below really helps the video out a lot. First, the start list review, which the start list is provisional and incomplete, even though we're under 48 hours until the race starts. I'm just going off what pro cycling stats have as a Saturday afternoon, as well as the official team announcements. Ineos, they dropped a bomb on Twitter last night, announcing the most ridiculously stacked team that strongly resembles the core of their Tour de France squad, minus Kwiatkowski and maybe a couple of others. Any of Richard Carapaz, Grant Thomas, Adam Yates, or Richie Port would be undisputed GC leaders at the majority of other World Tour teams. Given the high mountain stages on stages three and four, you might think, and the fact that they got Carapaz you know, front and centre in the announcement, you might think that Ecuadorian climber Carapaz making his season debut will be Ineos GC leader. But Adam Yates, he's climbing so well in the UAE Tour, maybe even stronger than Pogacar, I thought, that he has to at least be a co-leader with Carapaz for GC, particularly because both of them will lose time in the time trial to other GC contenders, which include Vuelta podium placed Hugh Carthy, Hugh John Carthy at Education First Nippo, probably the most complete GC contender on the start list, I'd say, strong TT, solid, actually more than solid, excellent climbing. Now, Education First, they never publish their start list until like an hour before the race, so we don't know their full team for sure, but... They seem to be bringing some small South Americans to support him, like Uran, Camargo, and Caicedo. For bike exchange, Simon, I nearly chased down Tade Pagacha going nuclear on Prati de Tivo and only lost by six seconds. Yates is backing up from Torreno Adriatico with a bike exchange team featuring Lucas Hamilton and Esteban Chavez, who should, on paper, be helping Yates 100%, but we'll wait to see what they decide to do. We saw in Paris, yeah, uh, not Yates. Hamilton and Matthews, not sure how that worked too well, and Hamilton also always seems to get his own opportunities, but they should be riding 100% for Simon Yates. And speaking of backing up from Torreno Adriatico, we've got Joao Almeida, the UAE to Estrada and Torreno already in the books. I presume he's finishing his major race block in advance of the Giro here in Catalonia. He's supported by the bones of his Giro 2020 squad, although without Mikel Honoré, who I thought was really impressive at the Giro last year, particularly in the Agrigento stage more than capable of a stage win here as well as helping Almeida at the same time, but Quickstep appear to be sending Honoré to Settimani Internazionale Coppi e Bartoli instead. Legends of the channel, Leonard Camden makes his season debut after spending out time at altitude in Sierra Nevada. I assume he'll be Bora's main GC rider with Kelderman returning from a recent injury. The last few contenders, the consistent, if not spectacular, Enric Mas, fifth at the World to last year, maybe fifth at the Tour as well, is a GC leader for Movistar, but Mark Sawyer and Valverde are on the start list as well, so literally anything could happen with the Movistar. Can't wait to see that. The young American McNulty appears to be riding for UAE after crashing out of Paris Nice and now needing to get some extra race days in. But the big news is teammate Mark Hirschi making his long awaited debut for UAE Team Emirates after a turbulent off season. Some of the stages here are absolutely perfect for Hirschi. But onto the parkour stage one, it's the traditional Kaleya. Loop with a slightly easier route than in previous years, albeit with the similar meters climbed. 177.5 k's long with three categorized climbs. The first two are long, shallow climbs that really shouldn't be a concern to a sprinter in decent condition. And the last short climb crests or 17.5 k's from the finish with a flat run into town afterwards. So this stage is one of a few opportunities for teams that have brought a sprinter, like Bike Exchange with Dion Smith into Marche with Ricardo Minali. If there's no GC threats in the break, then the GC teams won't be too fast in pulling, I don't think, like in stage one of Catalonia in 2019, which was won by the breakaway, Thomas de Hent, trademark style. He finished two and a half minutes ahead of the bunch. And that parkour, in my view, was more difficult in 2019 than the route they'll do on Monday. They did the longer and steeper side of the Santa Fe del Montseny climb, as well as the steep Alta Montaña climb prior to the Col Formiche, both of which are not used in this stage. Even with those climbs added, 
This stage has ended with a sprint in the past. 2017 with Chimalai ahead of Buani, who in turn won it in 2016. The break still has a good chance. Candidates obviously include De Hent, Gavin Mannion, Luis Leon Sanchez, Pedrero. I think it's more likely still that the bunch wins than a breakaway due to the slightly easier parkour this year with a lottery between Dion Smith, Venturini, Canto, whoever Bora ride for, Colin Joyce at Rally, and Juan Jose Lobato. Darrell Impey is still properly quick and he's apparently coming for ISU. And I'm expecting him to finish in the top three, probably good value. On to stage two, which is a bit novel for Catalonia, being an individual time trial and a rel relatively flat one at that. 21 k's with 200 meters elevation gain in a loop around Banyolas, an area familiar to many of the riders who live and train out of Girona. Cavanyar has got to be the favorite based on the style list I'm looking at, given his excellent time trial second at Paranis, like 0.8 seconds behind. Bisiga probably would have won with a bit more luck, especially as this is a rolling course it doesn't feature a sustained climb like that wall at the end of Paranese that I don't think Cavania particularly liked. McNulty and Almeida, they'll be the best TT results out of the GC contenders and should both be in the top five of the stage as well as Rowan Dennis. But given the low depth of time trialing on the provisional start list, perhaps Thomas Hent as well might try his hand for a top five. He can time trial pretty well when he cares to. In terms of the other GC contenders, Carthy and Kreuzweig should set solid times just behind Almeida and McNulty, but Still ahead of the other contenders, which will be a big advantage for the mountain stages to put the onus on them. And the big question for me is how will the Ineos riders perform? Adam Yates lost 28 seconds to Almeida in 13 km, uh, pretty flat time trial in the UAE. So he'll probably be losing 40 seconds to Almeida and McNulty here and 20 seconds to Carthy at a minimum, unless he turns that around massively. Port crashed out of Paris-Nice. So we don't really know what his level's like. I think he's been training pretty well though straight afterwards, but I'm reluctant to put the marker on him again by saying he'll do well, but he should he should set a decent time around Carthy and Kreuzweig, you'd think. Carapaz did a solid time, improved in the Mirador Welter ITT, but that did have a proper climb in it, and he still lost 25 seconds to Carthy. Mas, Omnic Mas did a terrible time that day, and I think he'll be losing big time here again too. Unless he loses time on stage one again, like at the UAE Tour, Sep, he can TT really well. He just hasn't tried yet until now. Koos will have to try and stay reasonably close if he wants any chance of a good GC result here. He lost a minute and 10 seconds to Almeida in that 13K ITT in the UAE, which is just atrocious. Like That's behind people literally not trying. Um, like sprinters and stuff. So he'll probably be shipping a minute plus to the Almeida McNulty duo again here, and maybe even that to his team at Chrysler too. Quintana, Simon Yates, Mars, Hindley, all terrible too. They'll lose a fair bit of time to Almeida and Carthy and Kreuzweig. Froome as well, he hasn't looked nearly his normal self in the limited time trial we've seen from him, despite having reasonable power on Jabel Hafit and Jace in the UAE. So that's more concerning to me if he said to pour time here than him getting blown apart in the mountains. Watch out for Leonard Kamner as well. He should be targeting a similar time to Kreisvike and Port, one would think, with his time trial pedigree as a youngster. So I'll be interested to see how he performs. Stage three, the first big mountain test, starting at sea level and climbing all the way up to the finish at Valta at 2,150 meters altitude. Reasonably high, but not high enough to say that riders like Quintana, Coos, and Carapaz will have a massive altitude native advantage. There are no categorized climbs before the final climb, but it's still a rolling stage beforehand. It's not just pancake flat, then they roll up to the final climb. Climb. But the final climb is 22 and a half kilometers long, but that's 10 k's of false flat at the beginning that gets gradually steeper and steeper. If Yates and Carapaz are pretty far back on GC after the ITT, then Dennis and or Castro Viejo, they'll need to pace hard on the early slopes to ensure that longer time gaps are possible at the end, which those riders are more than capable of doing. The final climb proper, 12k, 7.5%, with the two steepest kilometers being 11.2%, with 8k's remaining, and 9.5% with 5k's to go. Both of these points are ideal places for one or both of the Yates brothers to attack. Both of them love an early move. If they've lost not too much time on GC, then they should probably wait till that second and last steepest section closer to the finish. But if they've lost a minute plus to Almeida, then they'll need to go early because Almeida, with the team he's got around him as well, he's excellent at riding his own pace on these climbs, especially these steady gradient climbs, and limiting his losses. At the UAE tour up to Javel Hafit, which was shorter, but a similar gradient, Adam Yates put 40 seconds plus into every GC contender, including Almeida, except for Pagacha, who was glued to his wheel, but on the limit. His brother, Simon Yates, showed on Prati de Tivo that he's climbing at a very, very high level as well. The question is, who can go with the Yates brothers? I already got my title ready for the highlight video for Stage 3, Brothers at War in Catalonia, if it's just those two at the end. But Reed Coos, 
I think you should ride defensively on the stage and just follow the inevitable moves of the Yates brothers or Carapaz or Mars or Carthy rather than initiating the action like he tried to do on Jabella Feet early, which backfired and he got dropped. Kreuzweig is in good condition. We saw a Paranis. He's suited to this stage. He'll be close on GC after the TT. Ineos plan will be to use the co-leaders of Yates and Carapaz to force other GC leaders without strong domestiques late to chase their earlier attacker, which will either be Carapaz or Adam Yates. If Koos can just follow those attacks and sit on, it takes the pressure off Kreuzweig massively. You can then sit on behind and mark whoever from Ineos will counter. And bringing back those attacks will be the responsibility, you'd think, of Movistar, Quickstep, or Education First Nippo pacing. No rest, straight into stage four, a hard high mountain stage with 3,900 meters climbing in 167 k's. The first climb of 9.3 k's with steep ramps at the end should allow the breakaway to get a decent lead, but I don't expect GC action until the final climb because there's about 60 k's of false flat downhill from the first until the second climb of the day, which is a long but not particularly menacing 25.6 k's at 4.5% gradient with infrequent steep sections in a 5k false flat uphill at the end. If the Ace and Carapaz are still behind after stage 3, then expect Ineos to pace hard on this middle climb with Castroviejo and Dennis to force Almeida and the other GC contenders to work, burn calories, burn domestiques, which they might not have time to replace before the final climb of 18.5 k's at 6.6%, which is bookended by two steep sections. Now, Coos and Camda, they've shown in the past they can win on this sort of profile and have no issue with consecutive hard mountain stages. Coos destroyed his breakaway companions in the climb to Santuario de la Febo in stage 15 of the World to 2019, as well as winning one of the hardest race mountain stages in recent history in the Dauphiné stage 5 to Megev last year, which came after a tough stage 4, coincidentally, won by Leonard Camner who also famously got in about three mountain stage breaks in a row in the second week of the tour before winning stage 16 to Villard de Long after dropping Carapaz with 20 k's to go. However, in those victories, the important distinction to make is that neither Kuss nor Kamna were in GC contention. It's a different ball game if you're close on GC and if you're not given any leash by people like Yates, Carapaz and Carthy. So I think this stage will be a really interesting test to see whether either of them can obtain and maintain separation from climbers of that caliber. If Bora are planning something, then it wouldn't surprise me if they push Schelling in the break as a satellite rather for Kemner. They used Schachmann effectively in this way for Kemner on stage 13 of the tour last year. But the break has a good chance on this stage, and I wouldn't be surprised if it wins. Riders like Han Van Hoek, Jesus Harada, Hirschi, Edison, Zakarin, Soler, Tejada would be well advised to lose significant time and save their legs on stage three in order to get in the break here. But if the GC group does catch the break, then I really like Carthy for this stage. He likes to attack with a little bit of time to go on the climb like he did on the Anglaroo stage in the Vuelta. He knows how to bide his time well, can ride without teammate support pretty well. So him attacking on the steep section with 1Ks or so to go wouldn't surprise me at all. Stage five should be a rest for the GC contenders from La Pobla de Segura to Manresa. It's a medium mountain stage that is designed in a laboratory for Mark Hirsch and Mike Woods to slug it out. Two categorized climbs, the first being 8Ks at 5%, and the second cresting 23Ks from the finish, 7.5Ks long at 6.7%, just spells breakaway time. They'll be in the break, I would expect, with Aronsman, Brambilla, Ciccone, Soler, Valverde, Luis Leon Sanchez, Schelling and Impey, all those riders I'd expect to try and get in the break. He or she will be the favorite for the stage, unless he's like looks terrible in the earlier stages. Given that it's a long stage of 193Ks, there isn't too much to entice either the GC men or the teams that do have a nominal sprinter. Getting in the breakaway is probably the best option for him and anyone that does want to win this stage. Even if, for some reason, the break is caught, he can still contest the sprint and be a good chance of winning, as there is a dearth of quick men in this race. Just like in stage 9 of the Tour last year to the run, when he was in a solo break for like, I don't know, 50Ks plus, he's then got caught by the Rog, Pog, Bernal and Lander group, and would have won if he didn't bungle the sprint. So break is a good option for he or she. The other main contender for the stage, Mike Woods, won stage 7 of the Welter last year with an eerily similar final 30 kilometer profile ahead of the same sort of breakaway hopefuls like Valverde, Schelling and Elisande. Stage 6 from Tarragona to Mataro is the second and final chance for the sprinters in this year's Catalonia, a rolly 194 kilometer stage. Neither of the two categorized climbs are particularly long or threatening with shallow gradients and the last cresting well, about 14 k's from the flat finish in Mataro, but there's still over 2,500 meters climbing. 
in this stage. Dozens of strong riders will have lost buckets of time on GC and be wanting to get in the break. So a large break should form with a lot of the names previously mentioned for maybe stage one, like Cavagnard, De Hent, Bob Jungle, Champassin, Luis Leon Sanchez. And this really strikes me as a René Cavagna breakaway win type stage. There's nothing really on offer for the GC riders, judging from the profile alone. And the sprinters that are in attendance that we know about, like Smith, Cantor, and Manali, they'll need some special encouragement to motivate their teammates to chase for five hours plus after some of the hard stages they'll have just endured. If I'm Bora, I'd once again just try and get Shelling in the break if he can and then take the day off from having to chase. If the break gets caught, they'd still have Sagan and Jordi Mayoth in the group for a sprint if it all came back together. Stage 7 is the traditional 135k stage within Barcelona with the last 50k's being an 8k circuit around the Monjuith Castle. This sort of stage is a nightmare for the incumbent leader on GC if they've got a small gap on GC. The circuit's got two climbs, the first being the Alto de Monjuith, which on the surface looks easy, but is actually 1.5 k's of false flat, and then I think a severe wall of 500 meters at 13, 14%. So if MVDP here was here, he'd clean up this stage. The second climb is a more friendly 1,500 meters at 3.5% around the Barcelona Olympic Stadium without the same sort of pinch. Hirsch and Woods, I'd expect to be the favorites for this stage. They're the best punchers on the start list, and the other GC contenders won't be too concerned if they attack and go up the road late unless they themselves really want a stage win or need the bonus seconds at the finish. So I think it will play out pretty similarly to Davide Formolo's win in the 2019 edition. Simon Yates and Valverde have also won this stage in the past, and typically there's not large time gaps, but there still can be movement or lost places if you have a bad day. Carthy lost over a minute here and moved out of the top 10 on the stage in 2018, I think. But he's a much better rider now, so I wouldn't expect him to have too many problems with Uran and co helping him. But I'm expecting it to play out like 2016 and 2019. A couple of non-GC punchy threats like Woods and Hershey winning the stage ahead of the larger GC group that will be all together. But that's all the stages. They all have something interesting to offer. In terms of the GC overview, if you put me on the spot, I'd say the final podium will be Adam Yates. Carthy and Simon Yates in no particular order, but you can swap in Carapaz for Adam Yates or the other two, and I wouldn't be surprised as well the way he can climb and his consistency too. Almeida will surely gain some good time on the ITT. We know that. We know he can limit losses on the climbs, particularly those steady long ones too. He's got a good team around him, but he lost 40 seconds on Hafi, which wasn't nearly as long as the Volta climb. And on Prati de Tivo, the losses of that GC group behind Pagacha. They were minimized, I think, primarily by Wal Van Aert just providing a free sit for all of them for 3Ks plus and driving a really hard tempo. And, and even then, they still lost 30 seconds to Simon Yates this year at Catalonia. Almeida top five is still what I'd expect at a minimum. Would I bet money on the GC result? Probably not, unless one of the contenders were ridiculous odds. I don't have a strong feeling about it, unlike Roglic at Paris Nice. They've all got question marks to contenders here, be it their climbing, their TT, their punch, their consistency, their team support. But regardless, that's a lot of my thoughts. I can't wait to watch it play out. I think it's an excellent parkour that will provide a lot of exciting racing. Comment down below your GC podium prediction, as well as how many stages you think Mark Hirschi is going to win. Otherwise, like the video if you enjoyed this preview. Consider joining channel membership to support the channel and to join the conversation in the Lantern Rouge members discord. I'll have the highlight videos uploaded for you in Europe every morning when you wake up for every stage of Catalonia. And I'll see you then. Ciao.